start with the remote panel wiring. The remote panel is done with a four conductor RJ11 type con connector. It's important to note that this connector is the four pin type. To make the connection we plug the remote cable into the bottom port. The three ports are from the top down, sync cable, battery temperature sensor and remote on off switch and the bottom one is for the remote panel, which is what we're doing today. Plug it into the remote panel. On the remote panel, there are two identical ports. It doesn't matter which one you plug it into. Plug it into the remote panel. Flip the power switch all the way to the bottom. You will see the words configure mode come up. At this point, by accessing through the menu keys, you can make the changes to the configuration. Basic configuration will show up on the first press. Advanced configuration on the second press. In order to do the changes that we're working on today, we want to be in the advanced settings. Press enter. Load sensing is used to save power during nighttime when no loads are on. We won't look at that today, so press down arrow. One of the first important settings is low AC transfer. This is the voltage at which the inverter will transfer on. In this example, 90 volts. It's adjustable by entering the data buttons. High AC transfer is the high voltage at which the inverter will stop operating. Standalone mode for a single unit. Low voltage shutdown. Low voltage warning. Low voltage restart. Run without panel is a very important setting. This will tell the inverter that it's okay to operate even when this remote panel is not plugged in. The default is no, which means it wants the panel. So what we want to do is enter this menu, use the data button to change it to yes, press enter. At this point the inverter is ready to operate even if the panel is not installed. 